What's up, everybody? It's your boy, Gerald. It's the 5th of October, 2015. How is everybody doing? How was your weekend? Yeah, I know. We had potential hurricane. Joaquin was making its way on the East Coast. For those that, were living, that live on the East Coast, you had to prepare for that. And with that, there were things that were underlining in your life that resonated to the surface. Some of you made great strides over this weekend because now you're in a place of clarity and you're seeing infinite possibilities for your life. Yes, I know. There were those that had to see troops, things that may have been hidden in plain sight, or you were unaware, they were also brought to your attention. But the, see, I'm a firm believer, y'all, that even in disappointment, there's a blessing in that. If you're willing to embrace it. That's right. You got to understand something, y'all. Your environment that you know, your reality as you see it, only you are going to see that. You understand that, right? And everything that is being reflected to you is meant it should be to enhance your life, enhance your direction, give you stable footing. So, what do you do when your footing is unstable? You can either A, turn a blind eye, or B, embrace who you really are to allow that person inside you, that little boy, that little girl that lives inside you, known as your spirit. To some you may know it is your discernment. Some that don't even see it from a spiritual standpoint may even just from a linear sense say your common sense. But you will have this energy resonate with you to let you know, hey, it's going to be all right. What do I always convey to each and every one of you? I always convey this out of compassion. See, you can't get back yesterday. Yesterday is a lesson. It is a memory. It is nothing but a reference point of your life. So it's very important that you maximize each moment. That has, that's with you. It's your work. It's your job. It's your legacy. So it should be held with most desire inside. You got to hold on to you, y'all. You do. And I understand that sometimes things resonate. Sometimes things come, you know, come you know, you get sideswiped, you know, and you don't understand how, why, or what to do. This is for somebody right now. What is being required is for you to be still. That's right. See, if you don't have control of your moment right then and there, you will never attract the outcome that you desire, you long for. That is why so many people fall prey to wants and desires and fall short when it comes to the things they need because they allow the things that don't matter to distract them. And who benefits from that? That's right. The devil does. Because, see, just as the Most High, my Lord Jesus Christ, 
when he exhibited the greatest show of love by breathing the breath of life in your existence, your legacy was already written. So guess what? Do you think for one second that that's going to play out unchallenged? Do you actually think that your life, your whole purpose is to go through life with no input from you? You just go through the stream of life. And if it hits obstructions and you bounce off of it, you keep on flowing. And that's supposed to be your end-all, be-all. I'm here to tell you, no. No, it is not. So what's required is that you tap into that person that's really you. I'm talking about the person that you wake up in the morning and brush those, plur those pearly whites you got the crust in your eyes, and, and you got to clean your nose out. That person, that's the real you. Mm -hmm. that, that beautiful person, that's who I'm talking to right now. Because until you make a conscious decision to love that person, whatever is outside your door has no relevance. I think that needed to go out to somebody. I think there's somebody right now, you're frustrated because you feel like you've been on this emotional roller coaster far too long. Some by default, some by choice. But ultimately, you want to feel validated. You want to feel loved. You want to be able to finally exhale. Only person that's keeping you from exhaling is yourself. And the only reason why you're not exhaling is because you're afraid to do something different. I know I'm talking to someone. You'll come to understand that what you put out is what you attract. So once again, you are the best, the best product in this planet. And what I'm talking about is you because you're unique. There'll never be another you. There'll never be another person that will have your experience but you. Yes, there'll be commonalities. Sure, there'll be plenty of people that you will share the same mindset, the same like-mindedness. But if it don't make you grow, if it only holds you back, if you can't properly possess it, without feeling that you're under duress, well, guess what? That's not your life. That's not. That is nothing but an illusion. And that's what, unfortunately, and, I, and I've been learning this in my walk. I embraced my walk October 18th, 2011. And I'm continuing to learn about Gerald. And I'm here to tell you, y'all, I love me some me. I love me some me. Because I know if I don't love me, I can't expect the world to love me back. But my actions are not based off of receiving that. If it's divinely meant for me to have, it has already been ordained. That means I have to work for it. That means I need to look at the things that need to be properly in place. I know that needs to go out to somebody. So you're on this emotional roller coaster, and you're trying to find out things. You are lifting up rocks, and, and I'm saying that metaphorically. You're dotting your I's, crossing your T's, and deep down inside, you just want to understand it. Well, why don't you start by looking at yourself? Maybe it's the time that you finally do something that you hadn't done in a long time. And that's be honest with you, to be authentic to you. Heal you. Why won't you heal? Why do you think or why are you allowing your environment to base your emotional standpoint? Why are you doing that? 
They don't live your life. You define it. So why won't you? Are you afraid that because if you don't act or speak a certain way, you're going to miss the bus of life? Well, let me tell you something. Your legacy is revealed every moment that you breathe. But if you don't understand what is being displayed, you're going to miss out anyway. Why do you think we have what we know as lessons? Why do you think, why do you think you're going through what you're going through? They're going, you're going through these things to see if you learned. You're going through these experiences to gain the insight, which will ultimately be your wisdom. You're going through these things because perhaps you're afraid to use that word called no. I know I'm talking to somebody now. Oh, yeah, you felt that one, huh? Maybe now you're going to turn around and say, you know what? I know where I've been, I know where I am, and I need to make some adjustments so I can have the peace of mind. Why are you basing your logic and mindset on someone else's expectations? Why? And no, before somebody turns around and misconstrues what I'm trying to say, what I'm saying is people rebel by nature when they don't accept or understand what is going on in their present. There's no different than a parent saying to a child, Sarah, I don't like that guy. I don't want you to see him no more. And by human nature, we always want what we don't have. So what does Sarah do? What does Sarah do? Excuse me. My mouth's not working, y'all. It's early. Sarah, behind the wishes of her parent still sees Tommy and what happens a setting of events occur and unfortunately Sarah ends up getting hurt now from the parents point of view of course they're disappointed because they obviously understand that their child did not listen to what they were trying to protect them from but also, that's still an opportunity out of that experience. See, Sarah can learn from that disappointment because she sees what does not work. If anything, this will allow Sarah to do some self-inventory. And see, that's something that we as people, we overlook all the time. We just have this keep it moving mindset and if I can't deal with it today, I'll, I'll just compartmentalize it in, inside. I throw it in that emotional backpack, and I keep it pushing. But guess what? Eventually, that emotional backpack gets too heavy. And what happens? You can't go nowhere. Your life becomes stagnant. Your life feels, that's when that depression creeps in. That's when those fears start to take root. That's what we know is a stronghold. And life as we thought becomes bleak. Let me tell you something, y'all. If you're in a if you're in a, a a season now where you can't make out up from down, you feel like you're the only person on the planet, and you and you're in the midst of a room of people, and you still feel alone. Let me tell you something. You're not alone. God loves you, but you have to do something different. Now is the time that you finally accept what is not working instead of taking a position of arrogance, taking a position of rebellion, taking a position where you allow your pride and ego to, to inflict more pain. Do you realize we self-inflict pain and problems because it's easier to do than actually take a moment to assess what's going on? Why do we do that, y'all? I'll tell you why. Because the devil's a liar. And the devil, he loves that. Those are his tools. 
he will turn around and bring something into your life that you think is the like a sunrise long awaited to come to find out that is nothing but your storm. That's why it's very imperative, y'all, to always place God first in everything you do. Put him first. You want that heart to heal? Or do you want to choose to be that person that goes through that turnstile of people in your life? I know I'm talking to somebody. You always hear the same thing. You're a charming person. You are a diamond in the rough. Anybody would want to be with you, but why they don't stick around? Hmm? I'll tell you why. Because these people weren't your blessings. These people were actually your lessons. So now it's time for you to be still. So let's talk about the old hurricane. I think that hurricane was a blessing in disguise because a lot of things that were underlining, and I'm going to use this as a metaphor, things that were underlining or left undone for a period of time, well, guess what? God used that weather to expose it. The things that you may have put off, so I get to it, were brought right into your face. And you had no choice but to look at it. You had to make a decision how to respond. But if that decision was not in your best effort, you do realize you're going to see it again. Please believe that. But I'm going to tell you this, y'all, and I know this needs to go out to somebody. When it comes to your legacy, when it comes to your life, you have to be courageous, point blank. You have to make a decision to take a placement out of love, y'all. You got to do that. You're not going to find peace of mind in that stolen moment. I keep telling you, you know what stolen moments are good for? Draining you of your life essence. You didn't think about that, did you? My kings, why do you think it's so problematic now when you're hearing about uh, erectile dysfunction? Hmm? Oh, my queens, you've seen all these commercials about fibromyalgia. Hmm? That's not by chance. It's not. These both things are connected mentally. So if your mind's not right, you're not going to make sound decisions. You're not. You're going to be easily deceived. So let's talk about your friends. They're your friends, right? When's the last time you talked to your friends and they, and they put God in the conversation? The question should be why they don't. Or better yet, when you're going through something, like I know somebody's going through something right now, you can't find them. But if the roles reverse, oh, they know you're a phone call away. I'm trying to tell you something. The people in your midst are not your friends. And I think some of y'all are starting to see the revelation, the revelations in that, and it terrifies you. Because you have to you have to be honest with yourself and admit that you chose. See, we're talking about your reality. If your reality does not bring peace, that means there's something that you have not done yet. Or there's something that you fail to look at. And the question is why? If you waking up this morning with a struggle that has been long standing. Look at the things you have not done yet. And you already know the answer already. I'm, I know I'm talking to somebody right now. You already know the solution. Because when it fell from my mouth, it just did this. See, I told you. That's your discernment. But let me let you know something, y'all. 
and I'm not going to be winded on this because I, I really believe that the hurricane was, or the potential hurricane was a metaphor for a lot of people to put the parking brake in their lives in place, to do that emotional spring cleaning, to make a conscious decision to do something they've never done, like be themselves. Mm -hmm. That's right, Queens. The moment that you decide to be still and love yourself, guess what's going to happen? The beauty that resonates inside us all comes out. I call that the proverbial, I don't have a, a term for it, but I call it, I use it, uh, analogy is like the girlfriend effect. And this is what I mean. You date somebody for a period of time, and for whatever reasons, you part ways. Let's just say that you are the one that caused the connection to dissolve, right? You continue to live your life, but you have not emotionally matured or grown. Take stock of your life. And then, divinely, you run right back into that person that had a placement in your life. But the only difference is, it seems like they have unaged. They have blossomed. And you're on the outside looking in. I know I'm talking to somebody. And you're in the back of your mind like, man, you, you start to see things about this person that you never saw before. But the reality is they're not in your life. The reality of that is because you weren't still. You didn't see their worth. You couldn't see their worth because you didn't see yours. So guess what? God's love stepped in and divided you. See, let me tell you something. God is not going to allow you to ruin someone else's life. He's not. If anything, he will take your blessing and give it to someone who will not squander it. That's the hard reality of it. And to sometimes, to some people, that can be very humbling to watch and know in your heart that that's where you're supposed to be. But because of choices made, you suffer in silence. You can't sit up. You can tell your friends, oh, well, treat them like lays, drop it on the ground, there'll be more. No, man. We're talking to another human being. We're talking to another spirit. But I'm also a firm believer of this, y'all. Anything ordained for your life will come to pass the moment you claim it. The moment you claim you. Maybe some of you are going through this season where you're going through relationships, through relationships. You meet one, it don't work, and you throw them away like a scuffed tennis shoe. And each time you do that, a piece of you go with that person. And you're so traumatized inside your heart, inside your mind, because now in the back of your mind, time is perceived, and you're getting older, and you're wondering, well, when am I going to get married? When is my name going to change? Oh, I know I'm talking to somebody. Oh, when am I going to be someone's mother? You can't be none of that until you be you first. That means you must make a position, make a determination to be real with yourself. Stop lying to yourself. Because right now, the devil's winning. He is systematically and spiritually draining you of your life. That's why you're going through all the problems you're going through, because you won't fight for you. And no, this does not mean to take a position of arrogance, of ego, of pride. Those people who who navigate their lives with those in place, guess what? That's a slow train that goes nowhere. They may think that they're winning, but guess what? The same things that it took to attract that person is the same things that you're going to watch be dissolved, eventually dividing them. And one person's blessing is another person's lesson. Please don't get that twisted. People know that it's karma. I know that it's divine intervention because eventually 
God gets tired. And you'll come to understand maybe, just maybe, because things have not played out in your life the way you envisioned it, it's because that wasn't your life path. And you want, and, and more importantly, for those who can relate, think about the things that you strive for. And think about the moment that you put God first in it. And you connect it to yourself by connecting to him. When the blessing came, it always was met beyond your expectation. Why? Because that was what your blessing looked like. But you can't see that when you're constantly trying to be like your girlfriend. You're trying to keep up with the Joneses. Trying to be like your boy. You'll come to understand y'all all share the same problems, but none of y'all will do the work to fix them. Why? Because misery loves company, y'all. And you deserve to be respected. You know, uh, WC, of, of WC and the Mad Circle, the Mad Circle who's down with Q, he had a song called Fear, I'd Rather Be Feared Than Love. Why you want to walk in fear? If I got to constantly do like this, you'll never be at peace. If you got to constantly remember what you said with that person, that ain't peaceful. That's stress. That's hell. That's turmoil. So you got to make a choice, y'all. Real recognizes real. So why won't you look in the mirror and recognize you? And I guarantee you, when you do, yes, the tears may fall, or you may find an unsettling peace. But just know, looking back, is that little boy or that little girl inside you saying, thank you. Thank you for coming back to me. Because when you decide to do that, y'all, your life is going to change. Mm -hmm. It's going to change. And guess what's going to happen? All those things and those people connected to your life as you know it, you're gonna be, they're going to disappear. If they're not, you're gonna. That's the one thing you're gonna see. You're gonna start to see who has your best interest. You'll see it. Some of you have already, unfortunately, cut people out of your life thinking that they were meddling. But you're starting to realize now what they told you. You're starting to reflect on the interactions, and you're coming to understand that God was in the mix of it all the time. Because you got to understand, y'all, God is a custom tailor God. He will use whatever and whatever he needs to get to that heart of yours because he loves you. If you're waking up this morning in the same mindset that you had last night and it was unbalanced, it's time to do something different. You're not going to find peace of mind in those pills. Keep trying to tell you. Why you think they, why you think they give you those pills? Because they don't know. They just biding time. The ultimate pain reliever is God. How much pain you got to go through? Huh? How much pain? How many people that you got to say goodbye to? There's some people that you have allowed, aligned in your life that didn't even deserve to hear you breathe, not alone walk on the same street as you. And I'm not trying to be mean. They didn't deserve to know you but you found something in them that was intriguing what you were really seeing was aspects of your personality in them so really when you think about it you were setting your own self up for the clip and I got this feeling right now I feel this right now Somebody going through some financial issues that literally was dropped in your lap and you were frustrated because you don't think it's a time-sensitive thing. I'm going to tell you this. Pray. Pray on it. Allow yourself to be still and watch what comes out of that. I believe that your answer and breakthrough is going to come. But you got to be courageous enough to do it. Some of y'all don't want to pray. Why y'all don't pray? 
Y'all worried about what people think? Let me tell you something, my kings. The most strongest man you go, strongest man or woman you gonna ever come into in your come in contact in your life is a spiritual one. You know why? Because they fear God. They fear Him. But little did you know, if they didn't have God in their life, they probably have a jumpsuit on. They probably be six feet under because they were allowing their physical self to dictate their emotional state. You deserve to be loved. You deserve to be respected. You deserve to be treasured. Now is the time that you take the road less traveled. And let me tell you something. Some of y'all may have gotten some disappointment over the weekend. You got some news or, cert or saw something that shook you to the core and you don't understand. God's doing this because he's trying to get your attention again. He's been doing this for a while. You're not crazy. It's from him. He's trying to break, he's trying to break those rough edges that the devil has placed in your life. How many signs do you need? I was like that at one time. I usually have the, I used to actually have the audacity to think that my destiny was going to be created and forged by these, by my actions. How wrong was I? That's why running from your life don't work. You'll come to realize all that running is going to bring you right back to where you started. I know that needed to go out to someone. So now, the breakthrough revelations that are of this weekend is really nothing but a guide. Which way you going to go? You going to stay on the path that you've been on? Or you going to take the path that goes back to you? Because when you decide to do that, you realize how special you are. Some of y'all are so beautiful inside and out, but you got the spiritual block on you. It's called fear, insecurity, low self-esteem low worth, and you're wondering why people use you as a doormat. I used to be there. I used to be there. And when I started to see that, I got pissed off. I wanted retribution. And I spent a long time, many a nights crying. Many. Why do you think I got these little bags there? It was to hold the tears of my pride. But I love me some Gerald. So I'm going to wrap this up. I'm just going to tell somebody. Because the clouds are in your life right now, hold place. Your sunrise is coming. It's coming. Keep walking forward. Keep walking. Don't worry about what's behind you. Don't worry about the naysayers. I know somebody right now, they're dealing with gossip. They're dealing with secrets. You're like, oh, some stuff came out that you thought you never would ever have, you know. No, they betrayed your trust. Mm -hmm. And you and, and because you didn't act a certain way, now they're trying to do a smear campaign on you. That's all right. Ain't nothing but the devil at work. Because mm -mm. you reap what you sow. Trust and believe that. You know. So, I'm here to tell you, now is the season, the new you, the original you that's always been, is required to be present. And for, some that, for, for somebody right now, in the back of your mind, in the back of your, I feel in your heart, you've got a deep wound, wound, and your friendship was in your denial. Your fellowship was with your pain, and yeah, it was toxic, and you was, yeah, you played your part in that. I say to you to repent for it, atone for what, you, what you've done, ask forgiveness for the actions that you caused, as well as forgive yourself, and you start the process of healing. 
take the stopwatch out of your life. If you can commit to that, I guarantee you when the process is over, the person that you are today is, is not going to be the person you're going to be when it's done. I got a feeling something. My spirit is telling me you need to get back into those hobbies of yours. Yeah, those ones that they used to give you flack about. Your friends are like, why you do that? That's corny. But look, but really what they were saying is they didn't accept you because that's you. You find joy and passion in that. It's time for you to get back to you. The question is, will you do it? Or better yet, why won't you? But as I bring this to a close, let me put this in your spirit. After the work is done, y'all, in the intended time, anything that is ordained for your life will come to pass. Did you hear me? Anything that is ordained for your life, once the work is done. See, this is a part of your journey, y'all. Your life ain't supposed to be A, then Z, then completion. No, 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 no. You got to take the road less traveled, which means you got to walk by blind faith. And you will be granted an education unlike any other. And it's called your life. And trust, those people that are assigned, attached to your life, if it's divinely meant, y'all, you're going to see them. You're going to see them. I don't know why, but something my spirit is telling is telling me to tell somebody. Call your daddy. Call your daddy. You want that pain to go away? It's time for you to have that bond with your dad. No, you're not going. That's why you're hurting right now because you're trying to find and try to make up for the the attention that you need from the real man. That's your father. All those other little boys, they're there to distract you from you and ultimately drain you of you. Plus, you're not going to, the one that's supposed to come into your life, yeah, your future husband, he's a spiritual man. And everybody knows you're required not to be yoke, un, try to yoke with unyoked people. So you got to make a decision. That's why it ain't been working, right? We're keeping it real, right? Oh, yeah, they, they'll call you in the midnight hour, but they won't walk with you during the day. Why is that? Why is that? God's praying for you. You know I am. I see your word. And for that, for that, for that, it helps me discern mind. This is only the beginning of your new life, y'all, the moment you decide to claim it. And as I always say, if you're going through some uncertain times, what's wrong with getting a second opinion? If you're working a full-time job, you got medical insurance, why don't you go talk to a therapist? Talk to a counselor. That does not make you crazy. What makes you crazy is to continue to stay in the toxic mindset that you got. Einstein said it best. Doing something with the doing something with the expectation of something different is the definition of insanity. Why? I think it's time for you to stop throwing your heart up on that brick wall, expecting something. No, 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 no. It's time for you to have courage. And claim you. You love and pray for y'all, but we all must do our work, speak our truth, and stay grounded. You don't even realize it. Your breakthrough is right there. You gonna claim it? I think you can. Stay blessed, y'all. Peace.